How to silence your enemies. That's what we're talking about today. How to silence your enemies. And let me just say, first of all, let me tell you how not to silence your enemies. You don't go on social media and start slandering them and start uh, accusing them and all of these other things. You don't do that. That's not how God would have you to silence your enemies. Not at all. And uh, you, may, you may be thinking to yourself, well, Pastor Mike, I really don't have any enemies. Well, you will start speaking the truth, start declaring the truth of God's word, and you will have enemies. The devil loves to stir up people against you when you are speaking the truth. And so the Apostle Paul made that very clear. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? In the book of Proverbs, let me share with you how we silence our enemies. In the book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7, this is what it says. When a man's ways please the Lord, God, he even makes his enemies, listen, to be at peace with him. Let me say it again. When a man's ways, when a woman's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's how you silence your enemies, by simply living a life that is pleasing unto the Lord, right? Walking in truth, walking in love, walking in faith, walking in obedience, walking in humility. Those very things that exemplify Christ in your life, right? You are the ambassadors of Christ on this earth. Paul says, I'm, I'm the epistle of God. You are living epistles known and read of all men. In other words, people are watching you. People are watching you. And yes, you will have enemies when you are living your life for Christ in that way, when you're speaking the truth. You know, even the, uh, the Judaizers, uh, you know, tried to, uh, uh, draw the Galatian church away from the freedom that they were experiencing in the truth of the gospel, right? Through Jesus Christ, right? You shall know the truth and what Jesus said, the truth will make you free. So they finally recognized the truth and they were walking in their freedom. And the Judaizers, they were uh, Jews that wanted to mingle the law with, with the gospel, with grace. They wanted to mingle the law. We still have Judaizers today. And they tried to draw the Galatian church back into the old legalism, the old bondage of, of the law that Christ had set them free from. And that's what Paul had to deal with. He had to confront that. And it turned out that they didn't like that so much. And he ended up having enemies. And he said, I become your enemy? Really? Because I tell you the truth. So simply, the, the way that we silence our enemies is not to hate them. Not to, you know, uh, not to try to slander them, but to love them and to speak the truth in love and uh, please the Lord. And God says, I will make even your enemies, hallelujah, to be at peace with you. I love that. Let me share with you a situation that happened in my life a little while ago. Uh, you know, simply by speaking the truth and uh, somebody became quite upset with me, somebody uh, turned against me, somebody decided to become my enemy. And for an entire year, an entire year, this person uh, would text me, would send me emails, uh, very intimidating emails, uh, very, uh, uh, how do I say it, very hostile and, uh, emails and texts. And um, this went on for an entire year. You know, I would read them and I would just forget them. I would just leave them with God. I would just continue to live my life in a manner that was pleasing unto the Lord. I didn't allow His Spirit to affect my spirit. And, you know, eventually God turned it around uh, because I just continued to, to serve the Lord with all of my heart. I didn't allow that to poison my spirit, not at all. Eventually God made my enemy to be at peace with me. But let me tell you what happened. Like I said, about, for an entire year, I was under this uh, bombardment of, of slander and intimidation and manipulation and witchcraft and everything else that you want to call it, because it's all kind of bound up in the same spirit. It's a spirit of, of, of witchcraft, a spirit of Jezebel, a spirit of control, a spirit of manipulation. And all of those things, a spirit of fear that tries to come upon you from your enemies. 
And so I, I had a men's breakfast. I was in my car driving to the men's breakfast. And the Lord spoke to me on my way there out of the blue. He said, he said, I will uh, make you to sit at your, t uh, I will sit you in the presence of your enemies. I will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And I thought, what is that all about? I, I, I had no idea what God was saying. I will prepare for you a table in the presence of your enemies. When I got to the men's breakfast, I sat down. There was about maybe 12 other guys there. I sat down. And in walks this person who for the past year had been intimidating me, speaking evil against me with texts and emails and lies and accusations. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened. And he comes and sits down and there's an empty chair right beside me. And guess where he sits? You got it. <laughs> right beside me. You know, the Lord had already prepared me for that. He said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God already prepared me for that. I didn't know what it meant until I saw him come in. You know, I said hello and, you know, just carried on with the men's breakfast. You know, somebody shared the word of God. You know, we had a good time of fellowship, good time of uh, eating together. And, you know, I said hello. I was pleasant to him. He left. He left. That was it. I hadn't seen him anymore after that for probably a a couple of years. And then recently, my wife and I were in a restaurant. We decided to go to a certain restaurant and have breakfast. We didn't plan on it, just kind of, you know, the last minute, spur of the moment type of thing. So we went there, sitting down at our table. We made our order. And my wife says to me, guess who just came in? Yeah, it was him. It was him. My enemy. And so the Spirit of God came upon me. And I got up and I went over to his table. He was sitting alone and I pulled out the chair and I sat right down in front of him face to face. And we talked and we worked it out. And you know, the enemy will try to use misunderstanding. He will try to use lies. He will try to use uh, fabrication. He will try to use rumors and gossip and all of that evil stuff that comes out of the pit of hell. He will try to use all of that so that somebody has already, you know, made a judgment against you based upon lies, based upon rumors and gossip, slander, all of that, all of that, accusations. And somebody will already form an opinion about you, and they will believe it, and they will act on that. And that's exactly what happened. We were able to, at that table, talk about that and come to terms about that. And there was forgiveness, and there was healing, and there was restoration. Hallelujah. God made my enemy to be at peace with me right there at that breakfast table. Why? Because my ways were pleasing unto the Lord. That is how you silence your enemy, friends. You don't, you don't pay back. You don't try to get back at them. You don't you know, slander their name among their friends and, and all of those other things. You, you please God. You, you please God with a life that is pure and holy and obedient and, and, you know, just wanting to serve God in humility and in faith and in trusting God. And that's how you do it. And the Lord will cause your enemies, according to what we just read in Proverbs 16, the Lord will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. Praise God. I got up out of that chair shook his hand, went back to enjoy my breakfast. And I'll tell you the joy and the peace that came upon me. Because once again, God had proven his word to be faithful. Hallelujah. Because I acted in the way that God wanted me to act. And the Bible says that whatever we ask, we receive of God because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God restores God brings reconciliation, and God silences your enemies in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the word of God. Lord, it is so true. Lord, your word is so true. If we do it your way, God, we will always, always have the victory. If we do it your way, God, you will bring peace in situations and relationships, God, that have been severed, God, that have been wounded, and Father, that have been divided. God, I pray, Lord, even now, God, for every viewer, God, whatever relationships that have been, Lord, uh, separated and wounded, 
Lord, divided by the enemy. God, I pray for healing. I pray for restoration. I pray, God, that you will silence the enemies against them. I pray, God, that as they walk before you, Lord Jesus, in a manner that is pleasing unto you, God, that you will even cause their enemies right now, today, to be at peace with them. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for that promise. I thank you, God, for that experience and for that evidence of God's love, that God's faithfulness working in our lives because we simply please him. Hallelujah. So, Father, bless the viewers today, I pray. Let them see your promise come to pass. Even this day, I pray that there will be wonderful testimonies of healing and restoration where there once was division and discord and anger and slander. God, turn it around now. God, so that there will be, Lord, love, glory to God, kindness and goodness working in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye for now.